Jack. If you're looking for the captain, she's in the workshop with Dr. Harlan. Gotcha. Surprise. Yes, there you are. Good. <laughs> He's finally here. Dr. Harlan and I were just giving this torpedo the once over while we waited. Learn anything useful? Yeah. It's a death trap. <laughs> Not that that's anything he has to worry about. Now then, are we ready to begin? Let's go. Affirmative. I'm ready. That is assuming all the details have been sorted out. Yes, everything's in order. Let's proceed. Uh, hold on. There's still some particulars that need ironing out here. There are always going to be unknowns. That's just something we have to accept. Let's assume this works. Let's assume we open another anomaly and send Jack's consciousness back to the past. What exactly is he supposed to do when he gets there? Locate an undetonated biomass torpedo and sample the genetic material inside. So you can use the data to create a cure? Right. I get that. Hmm. I'm saying how is he supposed to do it? It's not like he can physically bring the sample back with him. And if he's in a combat shell, it won't be fitted to do a medical scan. How will he collect the data? He'll have to improvise, of course. Apollo. Greetings, Captain Rhodes. I have analyzed the situation and would like to propose a solution. It's good to see you too. We can exchange more formal pleasantries later if you like, Captain. For now, if you would please proceed to the hollow table. I was first. It's like a tampon, a space tampon. All right, Apollo, let's hear it. How does Jack get the data from the biomass incubator? According to Jack's memory logs, the last anomaly caused his protocols to transfer into a Series 10 combat shell. This unit was equipped with a threat scanner, which could be reconfigured to gather data on biomass specimens. Once we've successfully located a biomass torpedo, I will repurpose his threat scanner to collect data from the incubator inside. The collected data should then easily transfer back with us. Seems simple. Apollo, are you certain you can travel through the anomaly with me? A copy of my protocols has already been integrated into your architecture. I see no reason why we would not be transported together. And how do we know you'll be transported to the right time and place? <laughs> right. If we create an anomaly precisely the same way as we did before, isn't it reasonable to assume we would get a similar result? That would be my assessment as well, based on our previous experience. So long as we closely replicate the conditions that caused your previous jump through time, I expect the result to be nearly identical. In other words, they should arrive at roughly the same time and place where your android first saw the torpedo. And once they've got the data, how do we get them back? If the experience is anything like before, my consciousness should return automatically. That is our assessment as well. Dr. Harlan and I believe Jack's time in the past is directly correlated to the state of the FTL drive. In essence, Jack, the longer the drive here remains active, the more time you'll have in the past. We'll keep it running for as long as we can. Give you as much time as possible. The Astraeus fuel cell is exceedingly efficient and will most likely last long enough for us to locate an incubator and collect the relevant data. Once we disengage the FTL, you should be returned to the present time. Should? You're gonna have to do a bit better than should. This is time travel we're talking about. All we have are best guesses. I mean, sure. Live. There's far too much that we do not know about how these anomalies work, but your safety is my primary concern, and this is your best chance of survival. This is the only way we get a cure. The only way we survive. You, me, everyone. All right, Jack. You've clearly made up your mind already. I just wish we had a better plan than shoving you in an anomaly and hoping it all works out. Juno. 
Prep the engineering bay. Right away, Doctor. Any last words? Check. It's all right, Liv. I've done this before. Uh, once. By accident. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be fine. I don't know if you're being naive or just really optimistic. Just make sure you come back safely, all right? Is that an order, Captain? Well, technically we're both captains, remember? But yes, that is an order. Acknowledged, Captain. I will do everything in my power to return safely. The engineering bay is prepped and ready. Good. Seal all the ship's bulkheads. We cannot risk any accidental contamination. Once. Of course, Doctor. Jack, please enter the control room and the engineering bay below. This way. The control room is right through this door. Don't we need uh, Lev with this? Because she was trapped in that tube. Sealing the engineering bay now. Engineering bay sealed. Dr. Harlan? Any inspiring words? No. We all believe in you, Jack. To varying degrees. <laughs> Let's get started. What do I do first? Please adjust the dials to connect the fuel cell conduits to the drive core. Good. We are ready to release the ticks into the engineering bay. Once you engage the FTL, they should begin feeding on it and create an anomaly, just like before. Jack, are you ready for us to release the ticks? <laughs> ready to proceed, Juno. Acknowledged. Wait. Were the lights supposed to turn off like that? Don't worry. We are just rerouting power so the ticks can only feed on the FTL drive. Okay. Stand by. Releasing tick specimens. Reasonable, I guess. Well, I certainly seem to have their attention. Once you engage the drive, they should be drawn to the FTL. All systems are primed. Awaiting ignition. Do it. Engage the FTL. Now. Oh. Well, I don't need it. Again with this one. <laughs> yeah, we're back to Delta 13. I think we're gonna end up in the same moment as before, right? No. Uh-uh. That's not it. shell was not designed for biomass engagement. Any contact with the infestation will render us immediately inoperable. Where should we begin searching? Undetermined. I'll scan the area for identifiable landmarks. Yeah, this is the same, I but... I this ship. It belongs to Delta Squad. Mm. I would no longer qualify this as a... <laughs> There's that transmission again. 
I recognize this unit as Delta-6. Interesting. It appears this Delta-6 has already located several torpedoes. Reaching their location may be our most expedient option. Is it possible to make contact from here? Negative. There's too much interference in the signal. We should first clear ourselves of this debris, then see if the signal strengthens. However, we should check your equipment before we go. I will do my best to keep this expedient. Let's begin with your shielding. This unit has been optimized for combat scenarios and is capable of regenerating its shield without the use of external chargers. Ooh. However, a significant delay is required for the process to begin after sustaining damage. You may need to exercise patience. <laughs> Understood. Next is your armament. This unit is equipped with an M19C repeater designation Pulsar. Jack, are you comfortable wielding a firearm? Oh, this is different gameplay. I don't know. No, not entirely. I have used similar tools, but only in a utilitarian capacity. The prospect of wielding a weapon with the express intent of doing harm falls well outside of my directives. As a tactical AI, I cannot claim to genuinely understand. But I can offer you this. Saving Captain Rhodes and what remains of the human race supersedes any concern over eliminating a relentless, virulent, highly destructive life form. At least, that is what our directives indicate. Thank you, Apollo. Of course. Now, let us continue with a brief simulation so that you may become familiar with the device. Your armament is now unlocked. Open fire on the targets. Oh, this is gonna be interesting because that implicates that we're gonna have combat with biomass or whoever. This is so unlike the prequel. Targets eliminated. Unfortunately, should we encounter ticks, it is unlikely they will be quite so docile. These targets should provide a close approximation to tick activity. As such, successfully hitting a given target may require you to aim ahead of its movement. The ionized bolts of your armament are surprisingly slow. Though I suppose that is acceptable for weaponry of this century. If they're gonna move like that, this is gonna be a nightmare. Jack, fire continuously at this last target. Make no consideration for accuracy. Overheat detected. Notably, each firing of your weapon causes a portion of energy to be retained as excess heat. Without sufficient time to cool, this buildup will exceed maximum operating temperature, leading to an emergency venting cycle. Can this be averted? Yes. Firing in controlled bursts is the most efficient way to do so. However, you may use the button on your wrist to manually vent any heat within the unit. But this choice should be made tactically. The weapon will remain inoperable while venting. Understood. Excellent. Lastly, we need to inspect your threat scanner. It's what we'll use to scan the biomass's base genetic material, correct? Indeed. However, until we locate a viable torpedo, we shall instead rely on its original functionality identifying nearby hostiles. To that end, I have optimized the device's settings to our mission parameters. Once activated, it will emit a single sensor pulse, followed by a brief recharge cycle. Try doing so now. Hostile identified. Uh -huh. A tick just beyond the bulkhead. It appears dormant for the time being. Can it be avoided? Given the surrounding topography, no. Though your strategy is sound, armament from this era won't be particularly effective against any form of the biomass. Very well. I am ready to engage. Can you unlock the harness? Done. Now that you are free, I must advise. Operating your firearm will produce substantial recoil. I strongly encourage you to brace by maintaining a firm grip on nearby surfaces. Acknowledged. This is gonna be interesting. Now there's more action involved. 
Which I'm glad because I'm that person, but it appears sustained fire will be required to defeat the tick. Okay. Threat neutralized. Well done, Jack. But that's not gonna be the only thing we will be fighting, so. 